In the year 1608, a patent was submitted to the Netherlands government by a spectacle maker named Hans Liepersche for a product he called a refracting telescope. While Hans may not have been the person directly responsible for its invention, Galileo picked up his design in 1609 and made his own version, beginning a new era of astronomy for all of humanity. I honestly cannot imagine a person who knows how to use a telescope and believes the Earth is flat. There is simply too much that can be seen in the sky that supports the heliocentric model. Today, I'd like to go over a few of those and explain why they all point to the globe. First, let's go to our closest celestial neighbor, the moon. A popular flat earth claim is that the moon is simply a light in the mythical magic dome or is at the very least self-illuminating. However, a telescope can shed a lot more light on the subject, pun intended. Let's have a look at a few photos of the moon taken by fellow shill Pete Berube, whose channel link will be below. In this pair of gorgeous close-ups, there's one thing that sticks out to me. Do you guys see it yet? There they are. Shadows, visible in the craters of the moon. We can even see that the shadows are consistent. They're all angled in the same direction. Now, what can we extrapolate from these shadows? First we can confirm that the shadows are caused by a single light source, the same one lighting most of the moon's face, the sun. From this, we can easily debunk the claim that the moon is self-illuminating. The simple fact is, a light cannot have shadows cast upon it. It just can't. Go ahead and try. Try to cast a shadow on a lit light bulb and send me your results. I'll wait. The second thing we can confirm is the third dimension. Just look at the angles of the craters, the way their shapes change as we go further and further toward the visible edge of the moon. There's no mistake here. This is a three-dimensional object. This is a sphere. Moon. Sphere. Not a light. Confirmed. Fight me, flurfs. Next, let's take a look at some bodies beyond the moon. The following comes from IB Hunter, whose channel will also be below. Here, IB managed to catch some lovely shots of the red planet Mars, and what he noticed about it is very interesting. A few months ago, NASA's Opportunity rover shut down in preparation for a severe Martian dust storm, and afterward was unable to wake up again. Of course, a flat earther would write off a Martian weather report as just more BS from the liars at NASA, however a good telescope can corroborate their claims. A few weeks before this video, IB's images of Mars showed a very dark planetary object, but afterwards, Features of the surface became visible, and the planet brightened up significantly. So from this we can confirm that, at the very least, NASA isn't just making shit up. Moving beyond Mars, let's see if we can confirm some things about Galileo's favorite gas giant. First, let's take a look at this series of images turned into an animation, again courtesy of IB Hunter. Anyway, I have been collecting some astrophotography data, and I currently have enough for about five videos. 
so the video you're looking at right now was recorded on Wednesday, May 29th. Uh, I was able to get some decent images of Jupiter because the atmosphere was a lot more stable than it was during my last video. In my sick mind that justified me staying up to 3 a.m. collecting images of Jupiter when I knew I had to get up at 5.30 in the morning to go to work. On the bright side, I got two hours and 20 minutes of pretty decent video. Here we can see Jupiter's rotation, proving that it is definitely not a light in the sky. I would seriously like an explanation from a flat earther for the fact that Jupiter appears to be a rotating sphere. Just try, guys. No, no, don't say not good enough. I can hear you trying already. Explain the rotation. Explain the appearance. What in the absolute hell is the point of a light in the sky that rotates like a round planet? Jupiter is a pretty fascinating planet when it comes to astronomy. If you're careful with your timing and planning, a good telescope can show you even more heliocentric proofs, like gravitational orbits. Yes, Flatards, I went there. Prove me wrong. Have a look at this series of images showing two of the Galilean moons, Io and Europa, transiting past their parent planet. What's more, we can even see the shadows of the moons moving across the planet's surface. Now, Flatards, you tell me what we're looking at here if it is not perfectly valid evidence for the fact that Jupiter's moons are orbiting around the planet. You want proof of gravitational orbits? There it is, idiots. Bask in the glory of astronomy. Now, let's move past even our own solar system. Let's take a look at those weird bright clouds of dust and gas that we call nebulae. I have never once heard a Flatard offer an explanation for nebulae. They just discount them altogether. They don't even talk about them. Fake because NASA said they exist, I guess. Never mind the fact that they could see for themselves if only they had the willpower and the wherewithal. I swear they're actively blocking these things out of existence because they're just too inconvenient for them. I suppose I can give them an ounce, scratch that a gram of credit here. I know, I just lost half of you and say that the images provided by Hubble and other similar telescopes and observatories do seem pretty fantastical. Take this image of the Orion Nebula, for instance, a composite taken by Hubble of both visible light and infrared. This is the kind of image that a flurf would write off as CGI bullshit, despite having absolutely no evidence to back up that claim. Big surprise, I know. However, IB Hunter has our back again. Let's compare Hubble's image with IB's image of the same nebula, captured with his telescope. Huh. Well, would you look at that? Damn near identical, aren't they? Hubble's image is a little more colorful, and that we can chalk up to the fact that their image includes a layer of infrared, while IB's only shows the visible light spectrum. Ooh, and what's this moving across the frame, effectively quote-unquote ruining IB's footage? Why, it's a geosynchronous satellite. You know those things that flat earthers say don't exist? Funny that. Now, let's go one further to one of the most iconic photographs the Hubble has ever taken, the Pillars of Creation. Isn't that spectacular? The pillars are what are known as elephant trunks of interstellar gas and dust within the Eagle Nebula, around 7,000 light years away from Earth. Their name comes from the fact that the pillars are a stellar nursery, birthing new stars as well as being deformed and eroded by nearby recently formed stars. This is another image of Flurf would write off as CGI because reasons. Gotta love those reasons. However, let's see what IB was able to capture with his telescope. even went one further 
and overlaid his own footage with the Hubble image, showing us exactly where in the sky the pillars are located. So what say you cult puppets? What's your explanation for all of this? If everything we see above us is simply a light in the sky, why is all of it, and I mean all of it, perfectly consistent with the claims of astronomers, astrophysicists, and basically every scientist for the last 2,000 years. What happened to the skylights when it comes to nebulae? Did God squeeze one to death and then smear neon across the firmament? If so, why? What's the purpose of all of this? Why are we given all of this amazing stuff to look at if it's just a pretty canopy in your stupid magic sky dome? Your turn, Flurfs. Go. Everything points to the globe, especially everything we can see with the telescope. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel, which is Dead Kennedy in Space. If you want to support me further, consider donating on Patreon or purchasing some of my work through Amazon or Teespring. Thank you, and I'll see you over the curve, Space Cowboys. Live there. On the mode of dust. Suspended in a sunbeam, in a fast cosmic arena.